What is going on everybody? So today I'm going to be covering a quick video on a question that I've actually been getting a lot recently and that is on promotions at AIT. So there's actually kind of like two versions of this question that I've gotten and I got a question on a or I got a comment on a recent video that I just made on can you get promoted at AIT? That was the question and the answer is yes. Yes, you can get promoted at AIT. And the other question that I've been getting is how can you get promoted at AIT? So I'm gonna cover kind of the situations in which you're actually eligible to get promoted at AIT and whether or not it's feasible for you. So really quickly, I do want to cover the fact that you can also get promoted at basic training. And the reason that I'm saying that is because that's gonna kind of dictate whether or not you're gonna be eligible at AIT or not. Because really the way that you get promoted from E1 to E4, those first lower enlisted ranks is based off of your time and service and time and grade when you hit time and service and when you hit time and grade you're gonna get promoted and if you don't know what the different promotion timelines are I'm gonna throw them up on the screen right here or here some someplace right here I'm gonna throw it up uh, what you need to get promoted to E2 promoted to E3 and then promoted to E4 so with that being said there is a time and grade requirement that you have to meet in order to get promoted so just because you might be a certain rank and you get to AIT, you do something amazing, whatever, maybe you have time and service, you actually have to have the time and grade as well. So because you can get promoted at basic training, just keep in mind, let's say you get promoted early to E2, well at AIT, unless your AIT is super duper long, you're probably not gonna meet that time and grade requirement to get promoted to E3, which is a private first class, which you need, I think, six months of time and grade and a year of time and service. So without any kind of waivers or anything like that, then you're not gonna get promoted to that PFC E3 rank at AIT because you were kind of already promoted ahead of time in basic training. Just a little side note, if you wanna get promoted at basic training early, you're only gonna to get to be promoted up to E3. You're not gonna get promoted to E4, but in order to do that, you basically just gotta be like a top 10% performer at basic training. Now, once you get to AIT, the most common reason you're gonna see people get promoted is just based off of that time and service and time and grade. The most common group of people that you're gonna be seeing getting promoted are the like split ops soldiers. And I've talked about this in a video I did a really long time ago, which is how to get promoted quickly. And that is if you do split ops, if you go to basic training and AIT, at separate times. So you go to basic training this summer and then the next summer you go to AIT. Well, for that entire time, you've been getting that time and grade, time and service that whole time. So now once you get to AIT, you've really got at least a year of time and service. And you've also got at least a year of time and grade, okay? So that basically meets the requirements to get promoted to PFC or E3. So if you haven't already been promoted to that, odds are you're gonna get promoted to PFC at your AIT. If you don't, then don't worry about it. All this stuff, promotions, it's all backdated. So if you miss your promotion date or something, you don't actually, you're not actually wearing the rank or whatever by that date, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. People ask me questions and get all worried about everything. Don't worry about it. They will backdate your promotion and then give you the extra pay that you missed that's like in the increment between your, your current rank and what you should have been promoted to. You'll get all that extra pay at some point in time. So you're not necessarily losing pay at the end of the day. So that's the reason why you're gonna see a lot of people get promoted in AIT. And then you're also just gonna see a bunch of people getting promoted to E2, right? So to get promoted to E2, all you need is six months, okay? So it's not very difficult. There's a lot of AITs out there that are gonna take those people past that six months of time and service. So that's gonna be very, very likely. Now, time and service, time and grade. We got that out of the way. I kind of just beat that one into the ground. You're gonna get promoted from time and service, time and grade if you're eligible at AIT. Now, what's the other way that you could potentially get promoted at AIT? Well, at AIT, and I've talked about this in my previous videos of how to get promoted quickly, is you want to win and at least participate in boards. You're not gonna get promoted at AIT more than likely if you just participate in a board, but possibly, possibly, if you win a board, depending on if it's a soldier of the year board, soldier of the whatever board they want to call it, if you end up winning one of those at AIT, and hopefully you should get the chance to actually participate in one of, the, one of those at AIT, if you're active duty, 
you might get promoted. At the very least, you're probably gonna get like an Army Achievement Medal or something, and you know, if it's like a Soldier of the Quarter Board, you may only get like a, a Certificate of Achievement, which is good for promotion points for like getting promoted to E5, E6, or whatever. Now, the reason that it makes a difference of whether or not you're active duty or reserves or guard is because if you're active duty, then the company commander who is there at your AI AIT uh, battalion company, you only need a company commander to promote up to E4. So if that company commander is up for it, then technically they have the ability to do that. Now, if your reserves are National Guard, it's gonna be a little bit different because the people that are paying you if your National Guard or reserves is your unit back at home, technically. So if your unit back at home doesn't want you to get promoted because, oh, well, they haven't really seen you before, they have no clue what kind of soldier you are, yeah, you might have won that board, but we've never even probably met you before. So you might run into some kind of issues with that. So if you're like, just got promoted to a certain rank and then you go and you win a board at that rank, I wouldn't expect to get promoted again really quickly to the next rank that's probably not going to happen now if you go back home you go back to your reserve your national guard unit and you're like hey i won this you know and they gave me an army achievement medal and all this stuff and you know you've gotten a little bit closer to that next next rank time of service time and grade then maybe maybe they might give you a waiver for that but that's again you're not getting promoted to AIT anymore, you're not getting promoted as your actual unit. So if you're active duty, it's big army, it's that AIT company commander. He's the one that's gonna be really kind of pushing for that promotion. He's gonna be one signing off for that. If you're in the reserves of the National Guard, it's a little bit of a different story because it's not big army paying for your promotion, paying for your new pay grade. If you're reserves and guard, it's your actual unit at home who might be you know, a little bit more strapped for cash, so they may not want to promote you right away because they don't know you yet. One last thing that I do want to mention before the end of this video, because if I don't, then somebody will probably comment like, oh, I know someone so that got promoted. Well, y there may be some weird specific situations where somebody could get promoted for something else. So if you become a distinguished honor graduate from your AIT, which is like you're in like the, the top person in your class, you might get promoted for something like that, but that's again, that's gonna be a little more out there and that's also gonna be more like AIT based. So that's gonna be very specific to your specific AIT that you're going to, your battalion, your company that you're going to at AIT. I'm not gonna really have much knowledge of that in and of itself, but really the two situations are gonna be obviously based off of time and grade, time and service, and then winning the boards will also give you a bigger uh, chance, in my opinion, that it can be more consistent across the board for getting promoted in AIT. And if your reserves are guard, getting promoted in AIT before your time and grade, time and service is a lot less likely to happen, if not, not likely to happen at all. But ultimately, I wouldn't stress about it too much. Just do your part being a good soldier, a great soldier, if you wanna participate in one of those boards for the chance to get an Army Achievement Medal to get the little extra ribbon for your ribbon rack or potentially get promoted early. Or, in my opinion, probably the best reason to go and participate for these boards is just to get the actual board experience. That's a good thing. Whether you win the board or not, it's a good experience that, in my opinion, I really think that you guys should end up doing. But this video, uh, of course, it went on longer than usual, but that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. That would be awesome. If you check out some more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. That would be even better. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat if you haven't already. Hope you guys have an amazing freaking day, and I'll see y'all later. Drop.